They all grow the farm up. We're out in the tractor today, running on some regenerative cover crop land, putting some biologicals, some humates, some sugar, and a little bit of a commercial liquid nitrogen supplement onto the cover crop. Actually working pretty good. We've got the uh, copyright strike going in the background. Here's our Raven display plugged into our John Deere monitor. Um, that actually worked pretty seamless. I was fairly impressed with that. This little 12 row. I used to have a 24 row one of these and I kept breaking the toolbar. You know, look, you get a run to it, you know, 9, 10 mile an hour, however you set it up. I'm running 50 pounds of pressure, putting on about 34 gallon of a super secret family recipe. I can't, I can't tell you what it is. I mean, I guess I could if you stayed tuned. If you came back and checked out another video, maybe I'd tell you the secret, the secret family recipe. Sorry, the copyright strike in the background there. Going in, I mean, you know, I guess means these tractors do kind of drive themselves now. You want to turn around? Yeah, let's let's turn around once. Why not? Let's see how smooth we can do it here on camera. Let's see if we can screw it up, screw it up real good. Okay, so so far not too bad. And swath on. Lines are coming out, and we are rocking and rolling. Super efficient way to put on nitrogen. I better than strip till, in my opinion. Especially if you got cover crop, you don't really need to till it up. Soybeans last year, uh, cover crop, uh, rye, clover, vetch drilled into it over the winter. A couple other things in there in the cover crop mix. Putting on. Like I said, a couple gallons of uh, humates, straight Leonardite, some of the purest, highest quality input for humic acid in really the known world. It's really all humic acid is, guys, is just Leonardite. And then guys make up their own compost tea so they can and mix it with it so they can sell it to you as some proprietary blend. I mean, there's nothing wrong with compost tea, sure. Some some people have some decent compost tea. I'm not saying it doesn't help, but I'm saying that's like that's like six percent of the good you're getting. You really just need the humic the, the the base humates. I mean, when you look at what's in it, it reads like a trace pack. And, uh, comment below if you're interested in where we get them because they come from Leonardite mines. There are some mines that put out 75% pure Leonardite, some mines that put out 96, 94, 97% pure Leonardite. Those are the ones you want to get your. Yeah, it's more expensive, but that is, that's, you know, humates are, it's one of the three basic groups of biologicals. Uh, I mean, basically the humate is the foundation for essentially half of all biological products. So really just cut straight to the chase and just put the freaking humate on straight from the source, right? Yeah. You know, I've, I've used about 26 gallons of fuel to do about 150 acres. That's not bad, less than a third a gallon an acre. See, it's just a little coulter. We're just cutting a couple inches into the ground. And then behind that coulter, we're injecting a little stream of that biological and uh, fertilizer mix. Whoops. Hey, everybody. Here we go. That, that, that's what you want to see. Not, not the other way around. You want to turn around again? I mean, you know, when you're going 10 mile an hour, you get to turn around a lot, I guess. So let's, let's let's go ahead and turn around again and see if we can not screw this one up on camera. I mean, two, two for two would be too much to ask, wouldn't it? Okay, well, so far so good. And swath control on. Bingo, bango. We are running. Copyright strike in the background, doing good. 
It's actually nice little machines. They're, it, uh, excuse me, I'm set up two inches off of where I'm gonna plant. So this is basically a, a two by two band application. Done mid-March, like a month before gonna plant. Pretty, pretty good, pretty good gallonage there. Quite a bit of, quite a bit of pounds of uh, nitrogen and quite a few gallons of biologicals going in there just two inches right next to where I'm going to plant the seed. And this year I'm going to go ahead and probably put uh, some liquid biologicals. Uh, well, uh, you know what? Stay tuned. I'll show you how we're going to set the planter up this year. Be interesting. Making a few changes. I've been broadcasting this for a few years on the cover crop. I don't know. Everybody knows in the world of agriculture that margins are just oh so very razor thin. I mean, razor thin, and they're, they're, okay, let's just be honest. They're non-existent. They are completely non-existent. And we got a lot of uncertainty ahead of us. And right now, the actual board of trade is like a dollar a bushel below the cost of production for board, both corn and soybeans and that that's that's not a stretch okay I'm not saying that as a whiny farmer I'm saying that as just a simple businessman that looks at the market and sees you know cost of production versus you know farmers are price takers not price makers you can use some options play some short dated puts and calls and stuff and try to take advantage of some volatility but you know I, I, there's more money in trading the bushel than there is growing the bushel <laughs> the speculative market is just so much larger than the real market it's quite remarkable let's see running the track tractor as usual the tracks are cool you gotta look at the tracks for a minute But if you've been paying attention to the channel, you know that um, with the track tractors, I do like to skip sections uh, so I don't cut a big rut at the end of the field. And here, here we are doing this dang turning around again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run down the end of the end of the field here, get on the right tracks, and stay right in there. See, this is also a GPS line and a controlled traffic pattern on the end of the field, actually. You see, we're going to go back here to our... We're playing around with the rate on the end a little bit there. I keep that rate monitor really close. Oh, a little late, but that's all right. It's all right. We, you know, we were two for two. You can't, you can't expect three for three, and it's, it's salvageable. We're not going to tear it all up. We're not going to break nothing. Kind of tight, kind of tight with those side mount tanks on there. All right, and we're rolling. See, yeah, we we're we're pretty good, pretty good. That that's not going to be your uh, your 300 bushel end there, but yeah, what are you going to do, right? I don't know something about this time of day. Video shows better, and generally you spend all day just trying to get something done. It doesn't really even occur to me until this time of day. Once I got about a full load on, see, I just just got loaded, so you got an hour or something until I got to deal with filling up again. It's like, oh yeah, just as well get some video, maybe upload it to the channel. See if anybody uh, watches, clicks the like button. Let's come back, discuss uh, regenerative farming. Let's let's talk about what's going on with trade, global trade right now. I mean, South America has essentially replaced North American soybean production over the last 20 years. Uh, let's just accept that for the fact that it is. Chinese investment done with American companies, which, you know, free market, supposedly, so they tell us. 
that might be a uh, farmer discussion for another day. Grow the farm up. <laughs>